All right, if you have your Bibles, let's open those up. We're in the book of Jonah. We're going to wrap up the book today. And man, I just love this book. It's a hidden treasure right in the middle of your Bible. And it speaks to the days we're living in almost with precise accuracy. It's like God is doing this open heart surgery, you know, just so precisely. Oh, I pray that the church, that we as the people, right? The church is not a building. It's not an email list. It's not an organization. It is living stones being built together. And I pray that the Ecclesia, the called out ones would hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church today. And the last thing we read was where God says in verse four of Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? Verse five, so Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a little shelter, right? And he sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. So he's watching Nineveh. He's crossing his fingers. He's like, oh, I pray that the fire from heaven still comes and burns this city up. And he puts a little shade over himself to shade himself from the, the hot Middle East sun. If you've ever been to Israel, it's very, very hot. And he says, verse 6, And the Lord God prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might shade be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. So he says, God, thank you for this beautiful plant that shades me. Verse 7, but as morning dawned the next day, God prepared also a worm. So you got God working with a great giant fish, a whale, then God causing a plant to grow. And then God says, you know what? The most insignificant thing you could imagine, a little worm, I'm going to prepare a worm to do my purposes. If you think God is not sovereign or in charge, read your Bible, folks. God says, you know what I'm going to use today? I'm going to use a worm. God prepared a worm. In my Bible, I have that circled. So we remember God uses worms, just like you, just like me. And it so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head. So God makes this worm to, to eat the plant. Now Jonah's there, and he's going, oh, thanks, Lord. You took away my sun. Then this east, uh, my shade, excuse me, so that uh, the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. So Jonah began to grow faint, and he wished death for himself. It said, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? You're upset that a plant was eaten by a worm? You're, You're ready to lose your life over this? But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock. Listen, God says, Jonah, you're not getting it. I love you. I'm for you. But I also love the people of Nineveh. I prepared them. You know, Psalm 139, where David says by the Spirit that we were knit together in our mother's womb, that's not just for you and I. God knit, you know, the most heinous people on this planet. Those doing the worst acts, God knit them together in his mother's womb, their mother's womb. God thought up their personality. God says, I love you. I'm for you. I have a plan and a purpose for you. Now, many of them have rejected God and consistently rejected God and decided rather than to walk in God's plan, to walk in Satan's plan for them. And now they're, Satan is killing and stealing and destroying from them and hurt people, folks. They hurt people. That's how it works. But God's still pursuing them. You know, in God's economy, this is the time. This is the dispensation of grace. This is all who are thirsty, come. If you have no money, come and drink. I love you. And God loves these people. Listen, As we wrap this up, just see the big picture. God told Jonah, go to a people, Nineveh. I know you don't like them, but I want you to love them. And I want you to share the good news. I think we can relate with that. Jonah said, no, Lord, I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm not going to obey you. God says, all right, I'll help you out. And he gets swallowed up by a great fish. He got all expenses paid, submarine ride. Right to Nineveh, the fish pops him out. He preaches revival takes place, not with the king, not with the politicians, not with Washington, not with the, not with the, the, you know, it happens amongst God's people. Their hearts changed. And that fire, a real fire, when the wind blows, the smoke spreads, right? 
And the king then repented. A proclamation is made, if even it was necessary. And they, they turned away from sin. And Jonah was upset and angry about it. God says, why should you be angry? Jonah said, you're gracious, you're compassionate. Why are you like this? Well, you like it when it's for you, right, Jonah? Then God gives him a little personal illustration. You're so concerned about this plant, this little plant. Well, to me, that's all everything is. I created the Ninevites. I love them, and they repented, and I'm happy for it, and you should be too. So let's pray together for a revival in this Nineveh in which we live. Father, thank you for the book of Jonah. I personally thank you. May we have ears to hear what your spirit is saying. May we apply it. And God, may we see revival in this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.